The work that God is calling you mm. to do, mm. that work as well is finished, but it's in the future. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. yet to be fulfilled, yeah. but it is finished. Right. Hallelujah. That is done. Right. Hallelujah. Now and move into it. it. Move into your future. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming to be with us on another wonderful Wednesday night. We are always grateful when you participate with us, and you do that by just clicking on that link and joining us. But remember, this is a prayer meeting. It's not just a time to be listening. It's a time for us as the English community of Lion of Judah and those of, of other people that are watching and enjoying this as well, to be able to enter into this season and this moment of prayer and intercession as we seek the Lord. Today, our guests, are Ron, and thank you, Ron, for being here, and Kathleen, thank you for being here, Verna, and they are pastors here in the city, and I'm so grateful for the input and imprint that they've both been in my life and Charlotte's lives down through the years. In fact, we don't want to just start off going into all the historical business that's there, but, but we have a lot, of, a lot of warm and happy and joyful memories of, sure. of serving the Lord be, together uh, in, in, in the city. I'm going to just begin by reading the portion of Scripture that they've brought for us to be able to see as sort of a springboard for us to be able to just enter into and appreciate. And we're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19 and reading verses 19 and 20 from the New International Version of the Bible. So Elijah went from there and he found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and he threw his cloak around him. Elisha left his oxen and he ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, then, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elijah, excuse me, Elisha uh, left him and he went back and he took his yoke of oxen and he slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and he gave it to the people and they ate. And then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. And there's another portion of scripture, it's also from Kings, but it's 2 Kings chapter 9 and looking at verses 9 and 10 from the New International Version. I will make the house of Ahab like a house of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, son of Ahijah. As for Jezebel, dogs will devour her on the plot of ground at Jezreel, and no one will bury her. Then he opened the door and ran." So I'd just like us to just explore this a little bit and, and tell me, why you brought this particular portion of scripture for us to be able to examine and use as a foundation for our time together. Amen. I, I can go ahead and start. Um, one of the things that we, we examine in both prophetic ministry, and this is a prayer, prayer meeting, but we look at intercessory prayer as having a prophetic element. And one of the things that we look at uh, with Elisha, uh, uh, as it relates to Elijah, is the idea of both um, uh, accountability and responsibility. And what we saw with Elisha, oftentimes in, in our modern day church, we're always propping people up. We're coming into a place where, where we have to kind of beg them for ministry. And when they, when they finally you know, uh, take the call or receive the call, uh, uh, there's you know, the idea of discipleship and the idea of what does it take to function at a high level? What does it take to be a national prophet? What does it take to be someone in apostolic call, dealing with presidents, dealing with new structures, framing new worldviews, uh, bringing old worldviews into a new space? And, and Elisha's calling is very different than, say, for instance, in Isaiah and his ego, when you see them 
you see manifest purpose and you see you know the glory of God and all that's happening you know eat the scroll take the whole thing and and Elisha Elisha is someone who is you know, paying attention you know uh, and and you know he he's he's already someone who's functioning uh, and you know just having 12 yokes of oxen and he's fun you know he here you see someone who's already well accomplished uh, and he got there by paying attention mm -hmm. and he got there by having a, a sense of responsibility and a sense of accountability now we see this in the text and, and this is very important for for uh, prayer ministry because oftentimes in an intercess in an intercessory role we are we we come to we come to bear uh, not having a sense of accountability or responsibility for the task. We tend to be repetitive, or we're just fulfilling a task. But we're doing warfare in the heavenlies. We're doing warfare at a high level, mm -hmm. and it requires a certain amount of consistency. It requires a certain amount of dedication to the task. It requires a certain amount of insight. Elijah, you know, one would say, in my interpretation of the text, one was, would say, Elijah maybe didn't want to go and lay the mantle on his replacement. It wasn't, it, it, Elijah may not have been someone who was ready for that. You know, he, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you read above it, you see Elijah just came out of a traumatic you know, experience. And out of the trauma, God said, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord says, go anoint this king, go anoint the king of Israel, and go anoint Elisha, your replacement. Kind of, kind of, you know, verse 16, kind of a little traumatic. And you, you, you know, you see, you don't, you don't see Elijah kind of coddling Elisha. You know, so you're right. look, you look, you, you, you look at the task, and you see the the task of the prophet, oftentimes is one that that, that requires the prophet to bear a burden, and that means you know there's an anointing, there's a laying on the, of the weight, and 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 the requirement is that you don't fall down. The requirement is that you push against it, mm -hmm. so that you stand, mm -hmm. and, and that's so that you withstand, and and the prophet is is called to set your face as flint, and and, and which kind of means that you're going against you're going against this. You're going against the flow. You're going against the, the cultural flow. You're going against systems and powers and, and rulers of this world. And you need to push against it. And at times you're called to stand, withstand, sit your face as flint. Don't move to the left or to the right. These are the tasks. These, these are the words that are given to the apostolic and the prophetic voice, right? You know, that, that, that you're going to build new structures. And in Jeremiah, you're tearing things down but you're building things back up, mm -hmm. you know. And you need to know what the boundaries are and what the bound and, and not to violate them. So you, you, you need to have a sense of you're paying attention, you're, you're, you're competent, you know, there's a level of competency, He's, and there's a level of, 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 of abandonment, right? So what you see with this, with this scripture, and it's very important for me, you know, as, as someone with a, you know, with a prophetic voice or raising prophetic and apostolic leaders, that we, under, you know, that we make them understand that, that you have to bring a sense of accountability to your task. Mm -hmm. Not just a sense of ritualism or ritual, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be at six o'clock, but I'm here to carry a burden. I'm here to push against something. And I, I, and I need to see that as something as, that's responsible. I need to have insight, right? You know, an intercessor need to have an understanding of a spiritual insight. I need to have insight to know when something has shifted. When is, when is my, you know, with the oxen, when, is, when do I let go? Right? Mm -hmm. And when do I take on? Mm -hmm. And Elisha masters that, right? Uh, Elijah, and you know, with uh, oftentimes with prophetic people, which you know, the, there's there, there's this thing where they're sensitive, and, and I get that, you know, we all, you know, but there's this thing where where because I'm so sensitive, I'm 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 untouchable. I'm too sensitive, right? You know, but you but with Elisha dealing with Elijah, you know, Elijah's like, well, you know, I didn't call you. What do I have to do with you? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to do your stuff. I got you got to do your stuff. I did my job. Now, what are you going to do? Right? You know, and with Elisha, Elisha lets go of the plow to take on the mantle. There's a sense of abandonment that I, now the, the, I'm in a new phase. I'm taking on this new thing and I'm leaving old things behind. Yeah. You know, and and when we're talking about having being a national prophet, being someone you know who's going to do warfare at this level, not at this level, but at this level, they, you need to have that sense of abandonment. You need to know when your season is up, when your season, and what that season looks like. What do I bring to bear? What do I let go? You know, how do I how do I engage this prophet 
who's not who's not very cuddly. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not one Felix. You know, you know things here. And now I'm I'm a person in charge. I I have I'm a person who is used to having servants under me. Now I'm called to serve. Yeah, you know, I mean, just just to kind of bring a little perspective on this. When you see that it says about Elisha is plowing with 12, 12 pair yo, yes. of oxen. I mean, you're talking about that. Not only is that massive strength, but it's also financial clout. Massive wealth. It, yes. it, that's exactly what it was speaking of, of influence, of yes. credibility within yes. his community. Yes. Yes. I mean, he was plowing the ground, yes. just the organizational just skill in that season, in that, in that time, in that to be time. able to bring that But just about. having one yoke speaks of wealth. To have 12 yokes and to not necessarily be lording, but engaging speaks of, a, a, you know, just that, these, those terminologies speaks of where Elisha is. He doesn't have, he doesn't need the prophetic to be accomplished. He's already accomplished. Wow. Right, right. I mean, Kathleen, maybe you've got something to add to this, but I, I, and I want to get there for sure, but what this is kind of speaking to my spirit about, and, and I, I think I'll indulge in saying a little bit of this. I had the privilege when I, when I was living in North Carolina and managing that satellite network. It was kind of a difficult period in my life, but I actually was on the ground floor of this facility that that uh, was at Morningstar and Paul Kane, I don't know if you know the name Paul Kane, yes. but Paul Kane was was there, his bedroom was over on, on one side and mine was over here and we shared kind of like a, a living room and a bathroom space uh, together in this lower part of this of this building. But But Paul, he was one of those men that had that kind of prophetic insight that that caught the attention of national leaders. I don't know if you knew this, but he he did have times where he spoke directly with President Clinton mm. and was influential in his life. He told me uh, honestly that that uh, that President Clinton really didn't know how to, you know really fully value some things that we would consider typology or things that were symbolism and, and what the prophetic uh, understandings of those things were. But he, he literally had been given credentials by the NSA mm -hmm. and went over and, and he had been in one of the palaces of Saddam Hussein. And, uh, and, and had influence in his life. And, and they kind of looked at him as though he were kind, kind of like we would look towards somebody as a soothsayer or something like that, you know? Uh, and, and I'm talking about Saddam Hussein in, in that sense. But this is a man who had spiritual insights in, I mean, in the century past now, but, but of the times of our lives, mm. who spoke into areas of major influence in the world. Yes. And, and, uh, and people actually recognized it sufficiently enough to give Paul Cain a very special telephone so he could communicate with the NSA about things and insights that he was getting. And there was at least a sense of belief in the mysterious. Uh, a, 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 and so when you look at Elijah standing there and speaking to national leaders of his time, you see a bit of the model yes. of some of the things that, that God can do. Yes. And God can raise up in this season People carrying a mantle with words that are actually going to arrest yes. the culture. Yes, yes. And it's going to, without, without getting overboard on this, and I don't want to create a, a lot of backlash, and it's mm -hmm. possible, you know, there's, the misunderstandings can happen around, around these kinds of things. But it is possible that God will give insights to human beings who are listening to him or tuning their hearts or hearing his voice 
to be able to carry messaging into a culture yes, yes. that is far from God. That's awesome. right. And that's where we're at today. Right. So I, I, I just like some of you to some of your responses. Kathleen, maybe yeah. you could just I mean that's share a, a little that's bit. a powerful revelation also. And I think it is needed. I think it's absolutely where we ought to be as a God's prophetic agents in the earth. Um, I, I, I go back to the passage of scripture that um, my husband was just expounding on and just a mantling that is so important. I think some of what's missing from um, raising up the prophetic voice and really seeing prophetic leaders step forward into their calling, being able to receive this kind of word that you're speaking to, Brent, is this idea and this understanding that um, we are not really discipling mm. the prophets. We're not raising them up. You know, we, we run a prophetic leadership institute, in fact, have done so at Line of Judah at, you know, the welcome of uh, Pastor Roberto, and we thank God for him, his heart to see that and his, you know, vision to understand that you have to equip and develop the prophetic. But our, one of our uh, slogans for Pure Spring Institute is, and the School of Prophetic Leadership is to d don't stifle, disciple. So there's a, yeah, there's a, a prophetic, there's a scripture rather that talks about, you know, not to despise prophecies, but to, you know, prove and to test and to weigh and to hold fast to what is good, what is true. Mm -hmm. And so often what we don't do well is we don't give room and give rise to equipping uh, the prophetic voice that is rising up. So what happens is that voice becomes silenced and qu uh, quenched and suppressed. And people don't have proper discipling as ministers to move into the realm of hearing in the spirit the way they ought to so that this kind of word can rise up from grassroots level into a national level word to be able to to hear what God is saying for regions and for um, you know political arenas and the scope of things, we need to be doing it on the very basic level within our congregations, within our ecclesias, to uh, encourage this word of the Lord to be captured and to be heard and to be released. And so I think that's really important. And what comes through for me in this you know sort of story of this passing on of the mantle uh, from, uh, or, or carrying the mantle, you know, from Elijah to Elisha, and that we need to be doing more of that. And so we all have to see ourselves as uh, capable of being prophetic voices. The uh, New Testament scripture says, you all may prophesy. And so it means that you don't have to try to, you know, figure out, oh, do I walk in the office of a prophet or am I, you know, you know, specially selected? Perhaps if we're just open to listening to the Spirit and hearing from God more, if we have more of that in our focus, that kind of word that you're speaking to, Brent, uh, will come forth. I know God had to do it in me, mm -hmm. you know, in accepting the prophetic call, um, because I was just like, not that I, I always accepted and received it, but there was part of me that didn't understand that I had to position my life to hear from God. Right. And so receive you know, that kind of you message. Know, I, I, I just really believe that God is wanting to do this and bring this release of the prophetic into the earth and into the region here in this Boston area. I believe that God is going to do it. Mm. We are going to come into agreement with him about it. I understand there are questions. I know that there are questions. I am not suggesting for a moment that we're going to answer all the questions. There are going to be questions. Whenever you introduce the active promotion of and participation in mm -hmm. these, especially the fivefold ministry gifts that are written about, we all intellectually assent to it. Mm -hmm. We all theologically agree that God has these offices. But when we start to want to actually exercise those gifts and move in them and walk in them and develop them, then 
that's when the criticisms tend to come. And so as we go into this conversation and as this is a prayer meeting, I'm just going to ask that we would begin by praying into this. And I'm going to ask you particularly to join in praying with us. And Ron, I'm going to ask if you would begin and then Kathleen, if you would just follow up and then I'll kind of wrap this, this portion up in prayer. But I'm asking that God would give us an open heart to understand, and this is for each of us. Now, this is, this is you who are watching as well as we who are here, that you might carry some of this anointing of the prophetic insights from God to be able to speak into this generation. Mm. I personally believe that unless we see the prophetic and the apostolic join along with the pastoral and the teaching and the evangelist, we're not going to see the kind of breakthrough that God's desiring to give to us. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to pray prayers of agreement that God will help bring these things to the fore. Thank you, Ron, for beginning our time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you. God, we just thank you, God, for your word said that we should pray and not faint. And Father God, even as we come before you, God, and we bring our culture be before you, God, Father God, we call forth, oh God, that the prophetical God would have an impact, but that there will be, that there, but there would, but that there will be people, oh God, who would, hallelujah, have a voice, how, th that the prophetic will flow through. That God, even in these dark periods, oh God, even as we're coming from and, and are still in a pandemic season, oh God, and that we see, oh God, there's dark darkness is covering the earth, oh God, and gross darkness, Lord. And we see, oh God, that there's great delusion, oh God. Our children are in warfare. There's great delusion, oh God, and there is no prophetic voice. There is no one who will cry aloud or spare not. There is no one, oh God, who is speaking, oh God, the dust saith the Lord. Father God, we come against, oh God, the idea, oh God, that, that only special people have these roles. This is the role that belongs to the church. And the church needs to be a light, a salt. Hallelujah. And it is a declaration of truth that we're called, that, that prophetically we're called to. We're called to engage the darkness. We're called to be lights, oh God, in dark world. We're called to be salts, oh God, in places, oh God, that are becoming undone. Yeah. Father God, we call forth the yeah. prophetic, oh God, to have an impact. And we call forth prophets in the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those, oh God, who would, who would bring to bear and understand, oh God, that you're calling them, oh God, to be in places to herald the truth of the Lord. That we are being in places, oh God, to see, oh God, to pray into, to interact intercede, O oh God, to cry aloud, Father God, to stand in the gates, O oh God, when the, when, when the, when the enemy in, uh, attack the gates of culture, Amen. the gates, O oh God, of, of education, O oh God, where we are bringing to bear bad thinking, wrong thinking mm -hmm. into our children, O oh God, the, the yes. gate of entertainment, the, the various yes. gates, O oh God, mm -hmm. of our, our society, the gates of family, God, the tearing down of family, where are the prophets who are prophesy. God, we call forth, hallelujah, the church, oh God, yes. not to be in a place of hiding, but to go right. forth, the, to be sent forth, mm -hmm. hallelujah, mm -hmm. heralding the truth, mm -hmm. to say, thus saith the Lord, hallelujah, and to know, oh God, that we are that, that we're being backed up by the word of the Lord and by the, yes. the spirit of the Lord into this dark world, yes. oh God. That God, you're sending us, oh God, to even go, oh God, as sheep amongst wolves, knowing, God, that our word Word, oh God, is transforming. Yes. Not only would it protect us, oh God, but it would transform the wolves into sheep. Father God, help us, oh God, to raise prophetic voices in the land. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Prophetic voices, oh God, that will be stalwart, that, yes. will, that will not move, that would set their face as flint, oh God, but that would speak to th truth, oh God, even in opposition, oh God. Hallelujah. Let us not be safe in our four walls, preaching to each other, but God, yes. but help us, oh God, to, to be disciples, but to go forward, oh God, being intercessors, even as Abraham was an intercessor for Sodom, and when Abraham ceased to intercede, judgment came, O 
oh God. Father God, help us, oh God, to be prophetic intercessors, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah, in the land. Raising a generation, oh God. Father God, our children, oh God, yes. are wandering, oh God. Hallelujah, yes. help us oh, be one, yes. oh God, who will call them yes. forth. Call yes. them back yes. in the name of call Jesus. We yes. thank you, God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That we should prophesy, all should prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in the streets. Hallelujah. Even as the prophets did in the past. Even in the streets. Even in the council chambers, oh God. Even in the office of the president, oh God. Hallelujah. Even, oh God, in our politics, oh God. Father God, help us, oh God, to be like an Elisha. To yes. know, oh God, that we cannot both hold a mantle and hold a plow. Hallelujah. That we have to hold a mantle mm -hmm. and a mantle alone, oh God. Hallelujah. So that we can speak to our circumstances. Yes. Not because it's going to be financially well. Not because, oh God, it's going to be influentially well. That we hold a mantle and the mantle alone that we are your spokesmen, hallelujah, in this culture, hallelujah, in this world. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. And yes, Lord, we do call forth the, the prophets. We call forth the prophetic voice, Lord, to arise from your church and from your ecclesia, Lord. God, we speak that there be anointing that is greater and authority, yes. oh God, that is greater in this hour, Lord, that we will not settle Lord, into, as it was just prayed, our places of hiding. Mm. Lord, the, the, let us be like Amos, Lord, where mm. he said the lion has roared. Who can but yes. prophesy? prophesy? Hallelujah. Yes. That, Hallelujah. God, we find ourselves, Lord, sometimes wanting to retreat. But, Lord, I thank you that the roar of the lion compels us forward to bring the word of the Lord to situations. Yes. Yes. Oh, God, to be prophetic uh, messengers, Lord, to uh, be pr a prophetic presence, Lord, even mm -hmm. in places and spaces, God, that might be difficult and challenging. God, let your church be a true uh, church of courage and uh, boldness mm -hmm. and make us brave, make us strong, Lord Jesus, that we are not compromising or acquiescing, Lord, to the powers of the day. Yes. But we pray, oh God, that you raise us up, Lord, yes. in every nation, generation, every socioeconomic economic uh, status or class or community. It doesn't matter, God, yes. but let your church be represented, Lord, in the public square. My let God. us be, God, at the forefront where there are uh, confusing uh, situations and circumstances of the day. Let us indeed arise with a clarion call and a word from heaven, Lord, that Amen. breaks through Amen. and cancels, hallelujah, the confusion and, Lord, the, the, the corruption that is descending upon our culture. And mm -hmm. God, God, for this, we give you praise. We thank you that this congregation would represent that. Yes. yes. And Lord, that you would draw Amen. out those, Lord, who have sat and feasted and have, have been nurtured and gleaned on a rich word and a rich teaching. But God, now is the time to rise up yes, and God. to go forth uh, in the might and in the strength, as Elijah did, of that food. Hallelujah. So that we might pre prevail against the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, before I just even pray this prayer, I just really feel like there's something that God wants to communicate. When I think about, about Saul, yes. Saul was a man who was the leader of the entire nation of Israel. And Saul, when he was among the prophets, he would come under the anointing mm -hmm. and he would prophesy and he would just, I, I mean, to, to, to read it in the text, it literally would look like he was a holy roller, so to speak, you know? Right. I mean, like he was overcome by the right. Spirit of God and he That's was just right. prophesying yeah. and he's like, right. like, I mean, like, it, it, I mean, we know that the Holy Spirit was officially poured out mm. at the day of Pentecost, but the Holy Spirit was actually working oh. throughout all of the Old Testament yes. times and was inspiring men to be able to write the yes. word of God and be able to speak the word of God and and you know when when we look at this culture right now the leaders need uh. to prophesy the 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 people of God need to rise up in the prophetic gift so that the leaders of oh, the nation God. and the leaders of countries and the leaders of our 
our state for, mm. for, for, to say that, or our city, or, yes. or wherever it is that you're watching yes. this, those who are in influence and places of influence, they need to be able to find a band of prophets yes. that are seeking the oh. Lord and moving in God. Come on now. And if we can begin to believe, that can be you. Mm -hmm. It can be your That's prayer right. group. It can be That's you. Right. It can be your family. Yes. And so, Father, I pray right My now God. and ask Holy Spirit that yes, you will Jesus. give to your people, your people. the ability the actual faith yes. that they can carry the mantle hey. of the anointing. Father, even as, yes, as we were there at Roberto's yes. celebration and, and we saw that, that word that came forth from, yes. from Pastor Perez mm. and how that he said it is like dividing up his mantle and this page was yes. lifted and made into almost Glory. like confetti and then spread out mm. and everybody is to pick up a piece of that mantle mm. and right now now, God is assigning you Jesus. a mantle. Yes. And Holy Spirit, we pray right. into this. Right. We ask, Lord, that you Make would bring forth the heart that celebrates you mm. and loves you and is so close to you. Yes. We can hear the intent ah, of she. your soul, she Lord she. Jesus Christ, mm. to be able to speak your life mm. into the deadness of Jesus. the era that we're living in. Hallelujah. God, you can do this. Mm. We want to believe you. We want to trust you. We want to enter into it. Yes. And so, Lord, we simply bring ourselves low and say, Father, give to us both the uniqueness of the mm. humility, but the boldness of the authority. Yes. Yes, all God. together, Lord, Jesus. all yes, together to release mm. your word throughout this land. Mm. This, this nation that we live in needs the living word of God, oh God. and it needs couriers mm. yes. with Yes. this word yes. on their lips, on. on their hearts, yes. right. to be able to communicate it. Yes. Lord, we ask that you will lift people out yes. of the pits, yes. God. They need to be lifted out of the pits, yes. whether they're on the skid row Jesus. of our area, which we call Methadone Mile, or mm. believing for it to be Miracle Mile, right. or whether it's in the highest offices mm. of the land. That's it. There is a dearth of the Word of God. And so, Father, right yes. now, release, release it. it release it, release yes. it, release it. We are believing for you to release it. And God, we thank you right now. You're stirring us, you're moving us, you're moving us into a realm of faith. God, keep us teachable. Keep us teachable, Lord. Keep us accountable. Keep us in communities that That's will right. help right. one another by oh, encouraging and hallelujah. counseling and chastening mm. all of those things. We need them all, God, My God, to be able to come into the things that you are designing for us. My God. So, Lord, we just pray that you'll mm. bring this release. You'll take us more and more there. Mm. Amen and yeah. amen. Sorry, gang, I kind of went off a little bit. Oh, no, this is going <laughs> kind of forward. This is going off. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. We're getting into it. We're yeah. into it. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, I, I sensed the desperation as you were praying, amen. and uh, we've got to have that. Amen. We've got to have amen. that. Amen. Absolutely. Well, just, just tell us uh, what God has been putting on your hearts yes. for this next season yeah. so that we can join in prayer with you and yes. we can participate with you in, in the pursuit of what the Holy Spirit is 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 laying on on, on your on yes. your hearts. Yes. You know, we've lost Pastor Miranda mm -hmm. and a, a, a great apostolic. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an apostle. He yes. would never have said that about himself. Mm -hmm. I never ever heard him say that. Mm -hmm. I heard other people say it mm -hmm. and I agree with it. Mm -hmm. But because he was able to set things in order and yes. set things in place yes. and that's the builder model mm -hmm. that, that is evidence of an apostolic calling. Mm. But we need to be able to move into the things of God That's on right. a greater level. That's right. You know, we we loved and lost Harry Jackson. Mm. That's right. You know, another it, prophetic yes, voice. Man of God. Yes. Godly man, leader of yes. of of movements. God. That's right. 
you know, I, I, I'm so privileged to have known him and, 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 and shared n numerous times yes. of, of interaction. And I know you loved him yes, dearly because yes. he came and he spoke. Yes. And yes. I, I believe he spoke here in our church oh, yes, here, absolutely. you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. at one of your conferences. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, yes. but just, just, just tell us what you think God's doing now right. and how do we, how do we respond to that? Yeah. Well, that makes me think of, you know, Brent, uh, you know, second, second Kings, uh, chapter two, which talks about this experience, you know, recounts the experience of Elijah and Elisha now crossing over, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and Elijah is going to leave and he's now going to give his mantle to Elisha. Uh, you know, when uh, my husband spoke earlier about the early, you know, times of their ministry and uh, it was more about establishing um, mentorship and uh, uh, the calling for Elijah, Elisha. Um, but here you have this place where the law of impartation is being fulfilled. Um, Elisha has walked and gleaned from Elijah and now it is his time to move at, to the forefront of ministry. And he asks a hard thing. He says, you know, I want a double portion of your spirit. I don't believe Elisha asked that in pride or arrogance, but he understood that for him to continue after his mentor had left, he needed a strong anointing. Mm. And he needed a double portion of that mantle. And I think what I see in that is the importance of us recognizing that we have to be willing to walk and glean from someone who, like Pastor Roberto, functions so fully in an apostolic anointing, a, a great example, and equipping others, dedicating his life to that. Um, but also when the time has come for us to step forward to the forefront of ministry, we need to walk confidently, boldly, and with great authority and anointing yes, yes. in the, the places that God has called us to. Sometimes we're so smitten in the shadow of a great leader that we're not able to come forth, come mm. forward wow, into our wow, next level. Wow, and so, so and that's never what God intended for us to do, and it's not what I believe, and I'm sure you would agree, Pastor Roberto would have, would have lived for, or believed for, hoped for. The understanding is imparting into the lives of people so that God's purpose would go forth even stronger yes. after I've moved higher or moved on, you know, to my next place or assignment. And so this is what I believe God is calling us into and recognition and understanding right. of his mandate upon each and every one of our lives and that the, the stakes have been raised. The bar has gone higher for us and we need to step forward into it. Now, this mantle that was first thrown on Elisha is not just an initiation mm. act or an orientation act, but it is now his mantle mm -hmm. and it is now his mantle to carry forth Hallelujah. Uh, in great authority, not ever second guessing the call or apologizing for what God has called us into. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that for us to step into these deep waters and these de deal with these greater uh, giants and things that are, you know, coming up at us in our culture, we have to be willing to step forward in the apostolic and prophetic. You said it, Brent, that we must not shy away from these things. It's not about the title. It's about positioning ourselves to walk in this function so that the word of the Lord will not be stopped. The message of the gospel would go forth and that we would have uh, an indelible, uh, leave an indelible mark in the earth that God is glorified and God is raised up. And, and so we must be the prophet in everything. We must be, we must rise up and take that mantle and go past all of the obstacles. Now, the, the chapter that was read in, in, in 2 Kings, and I think it was uh, chapter 9, shows us uh, Elisha's ministry in the aftermath of Elijah's passing, mm -hmm. go, going up. He was caught up. 
And so we see that he's facing and confronting the spirits of Ahab mm -hmm. and Jezebel. Remember, Elijah, great man Elijah, cowered in the face of the Jezebel. He was able to stand strong, but then after the great, you know, outpouring, uh, you know, fire falling from heaven and all of that happening, Elijah was running for his life. And so even the greatest of us feel these moments of weakness. But what we see in Elisha is that he is carrying forth this mantle and calling with complete boldness and courage. He's going after the Jezebels. He's going after the Ahabs. He's not afraid to, to denounce those things that are not of God, not pleasing to God. And so we must not go slower. We must not you know, certainly we've got to catch our breath. We've got to, you know, uh, deal with the passing and the loss and the pain. And, and all of this has impacted us all so greatly. But there is a work of the Lord to be carried forth. And it must be carried forth with even greater authority and power and anointing. And don't second guess what God can do through you. That's right. Amen. 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 You've Amen. seen great things, but God is able to do mm -hmm. even greater. Amen. Greater things are yet to come. Mm -hmm. And God is still raising up the apostles and the prophets. He's still raising up the prophetic anointing and authority. He's still releasing people to do mighty works. And you're part of them. That's right. You're part of that remnant. Yeah. Amen. You know, I, I really do believe that, you know, when you were talking about seeing people, I'm going to use the term, seem larger than life. Yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. When we see people that have got so much of a profound gifting, it makes us feel small. So it, it gives us pause. Us, yeah, it makes us feel like, well, they can do that right. because they have right. that authority and they have that work. And the tendency is for us to look at them almost as though they are our champion. Right. And, and honestly, I, I, I have to say, I, I have felt that way in regard to Pastor Roberto. Yes. You know, I, I was really wanting to be there to cheer him on. on. Like he's going to do yeah, this amazing he's thing. He's got that, uh, that amazing set of gifts. I mean, who could deny the, the, the massive set of gifts that that one that man That he walked with. Housed Absolutely. And, and carried in, around. In, in the various arenas that he, can, he was able to travel through. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Tremendous vision, the, scope. Yeah, I mean, we, everybody knew it. You, right. you didn't have to spend much time no. with Roberto, yeah. you know, to just know. And he didn't say it out loud. He right. didn't, you know, there was not a braggadocious uh, bone yeah, in his body. It was, it was just there. Absolutely. It was just insights but and you know, understandings. Brent, even Christ, when he walked this earth and he delegated authority to his disciples, but he also said to them some profound words. He said, greater works than these, than these will, you, will do. you do. I keep saying, yeah. Christ, you, uh, that, that passage always baffles me. Greater works than these shall you do. You know, the, the safe take on that Mm -hmm. that theologians have messed with. I think I've heard it too. Is, Go ahead. Is that, you know, it's greater works because there's many more of many you. Many more. And, and so there's going to be yes. many, many more. You know, that I, I, I really believe that because of our limp faith, yes. we, and, and I have that too. Right. I mean, I, you I rationalize have to, You know, scripture. we rationalize it and we got, and we make it fit into our little world view. Absolutely. When, when Jesus said, you know, oh, well, if you have faith as a grain, grain of, of a mustard, mustard seed, seed, you can say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. And if you don't have doubt in your heart, it will be done. It's like he walked on water. Only one other man sort of stumbled on water. Yeah. It was Peter, but at yeah. least he did. Yeah, at least he, know, got at the least he got Listen. out of the boat. You know, and and God's getting us out of the boat. boat. He's getting you Absolutely. out of the boat. And this is what God is about to do That's here right. in this region. Right. And Lord, just help us 
so that we can respond in the right way, so yes. that we can say yes to this. Ron, have you got some thoughts in, in that? Well, I, I just don't want to leave, leave no, no, you no, in I, 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 here. You guys are talking so well. <laughs> No, but uh, one of the things that really, you know, came up is, is the idea of, um, uh, for me in this conversation, is the idea of unity and diversity, right? Yeah. And, and it's the idea, of, you know, in, in uh, Elisha, is Elisha was, was, was dead set on fulfilling purpose. Yes. You see, like, you see in how he, how yeah, he when takes he took the, mantle, the mantle and he you see, smacked the water. He, <laughs> but, but you see how he, the preparation for that, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. you see how he took the mantle, you yeah. see how he served. You see how he won the respect of the other, uh, 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 the other prophetic voices. They knew, mm -hmm. you know, they knew that your master, uh, they were, he, he, Elijah was their master, master too. Yeah. He was part of the whole school. Where but, is he, the he, Lord God of Elijah? Exactly. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> you know it, it, but, it, but you see in the determination that I'm going to go with you. Even though you yeah. say, stay in Gilgal, stay in Jericho, stay in Bethel, stay, right. stay you know, yes. I'm going to go with you, you know. So there was a determination that, that, that you saw uh, in, in understanding that I have to fill my prophetic purpose. My prophetic purpose. Yeah. And oftentimes, what you, you know, and Pastor Kathleen, you know, talked about, you know, being in the shadow of greatness, oftentimes will give us pause, oftentimes will place us in, in, in an arena where, where we say, well, I'm not like him. Mm -hmm. And and a sense, the Bible talks about it as an act of one of rebellion, mm -hmm. to, to an act of idolatry. We've made this man yes. great, and yes. you 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 saw this with with Moses, but the great deliverer, how he had to step away and let let Joshua, yeah. which was really kind of in the shadow, you know, of because the idea is that there can be no going greater than God, and there are things in you that 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 may not exist in your in your former great leader but needs to find its expression in you Amen. and Amen. only you mm -hmm. and that you have to find that purpose. And one of the things that we as from, from prophetically uh, uh, in this culture is that this, this, this culture has become like a great harlot, right? We, we, even in the church, we are worshiping systems, we're worshiping people and, and there's an expression that needs to come out. You know, the prophets are not all the same. You know, the areas of influence are not all the same. The prophetic words are not all the same. They may come in the, in the spirit of Elijah, but we're, we're still all following God. It is all, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to be glorified in all this. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and, and when we come and we say, this person, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just as guilty. I, you know, I, I, I came in ministry a little late because I looked around and I said, man, all of these gifted people here. You know, and after a while it's like, well, Whatever I have, I need to express that. Right. You know, and I need to I need to understand that I have to be dedicated to that. I have to have the same kind of dedication, and and all of a sudden your voice will find, will make room for you. That's right. Yeah. And there will be people who will who will, who will hear your words. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because you have a purpose to fulfill. Right. And I think in this conversation we 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 need to you know in terms of raising people up, we have to really raise people up not to see people. You know, the greatness of, of Pastor Miranda, and, 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 and again, he's a great man with, without a doubt, the greatness of him, of, of, but, the, but though that greatness shouldn't give us pause, but push us forward. Right, because right. It's, it's not really about the person at the end exactly. of the story. Well, yes. that's it. It's that's about it. God. That's it's about it. God. And our it's compliance about, to being yeah. obedient, you know, Pastor Miranda, was willing to obey God and, and brought his life in alignment with that obedience and that call. And, and really, that's, that's what we want to just really focus on even in, we're going to go to another round of prayer. And I just really want people to begin to know that the gift of God that's stirring inside of you, yes, that is God's calling, it's his purposing, it's his design for you, and it will look different than, than Pastor Miranda's. It will look different. I mean, there will be some similarities because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, and yes. they do manifest yes. in yes. different personalities, yes. and they, you know, they carry the flavor of the individual even as they are carrying the unction of yes. the Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. So I, I know that God is wanting to bring you 
yes. who are joining us and watching yes, yes, to yes. bring you yes. into your place, into your, purpose. your purpose. You're designed for this hour. This hour requires not just one or two people moving in these gifts. Yes. It requires a whole army rising up, That's right. carrying the mantle of God, carrying the unction of God. Mm. You know, you think of so many stories, but one of the stories is the story of, of Gideon. That's right. I mean, it went from 30,000 to 3,000 to 300, and, right. and, 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 and all they had to do was carry a lamp. Now think about this. That's all they had to do. This, they had to carry the flame. It had to be hidden until one moment, all of a sudden, they're all broken together, and the light just shines, and boom, God defeats a massive army. They kill each other. They destroy one another. God wants for us to understand our assignment and to be able to move in that assignment. And he's calling you into a place. So we're just going to pray and ask the Lord to just really open up our spirits even more. And uh, whoever wants to pray first, you just go for it. <laughs> and then, then we'll just kind of, because uh, we're coming sort of towards the end of this hour and, and, and we're not going to go too, too much longer, but, but we want for each person to come under the unction of the call of God mm. yes. that He has set mm. in place for your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just be obedient to the Lord. Just speak as God gives us yes. insight and understanding right in this moment. Yeah, so Lord, we just thank you today. We just thank you for the spaces that you bring us to so that we could hear your voice. And God, even this place, how difficult it is for Congregation Lion of Judah at this moment of passing and loss mm -hmm. of their dear beloved, of our dear beloved leader, mm -hmm. God. We even pray right now that this be, this liminal space, this space in between, be a space that you are germinating mm. new things. Yes. Mm. You are generating some things. Mm. We may not always fully recognize it, may not feel good at all to us. But God, that what you're doing in this congregation and in congregations yes. across the city and mm. across the mm -hmm. metropolis of Boston, God, we, we pray even right now that this stirring, this, this, this place of transition and uncertainty will yield powerful results yes, God. and God that there will be a time and a moment of quickening and awakening in the hearts of those who are hearing the call and are surrendering and yielding more and more to you in this space. God that there would be a crossing over yes, the threshold. Amen. God, moving from the old into the new, mm -hmm. where you're calling us to go, Lord Jesus, that we will not shrink back. We will not lean on the past or hold on to places of comfort and security, mm -hmm. but we will recognize the call of God, yes. compelling us Thank beyond you, ourselves, breaking off every veil of inhibition, breaking off every uh, yoke and of bondage, every place where we have relied on, depended on, oh God, security blankets, Lord, that this is the time that you are summonsing your people to rise up and be the champion voices that you've called us to be. So we declare, God, that you're uh, pouring in grace and strength to your people. Yes. Grace and strength into the hearts of your people. God, that we are able by you to run through the troop and to leap over the wall. And so God, that when we come out of this Jordan, when we rise up out of this Jordan, God, that there will be a powerful mark of a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And God, there will be a significant sense of newness. Lord, you're doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Give us eyes to perceive it. Yes. 
in the Holy Ghost. Give us ears to hear it in the Spirit, Lord. Release your people from this place of intimidation and, and, and mediocrity and lethargy. But help us, Lord, increase the scope here, even of Line of Judah, for, yes, for people to begin mm -hmm. to see beyond the insulated level. Oh, God, the insular, oh, God. But to mm -hmm. look beyond, to break out of the box, uh, and to think even larger than ever before. Amen. And to Amen. know that all things are possible by you, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father God, we bring before you, Lord, hallelujah, the prophets who hesitate. Mm. The prophets, of oh God, who, hallelujah, uh, are not being discipled. Oh God, we call forth, oh God, courage. Hallelujah. Boldness, oh God, to leave old things, to count the cost, Lord. Uh, to be in a place, Lord, where, where the cost is counted and we make decisions for, the, for purpose in our lives. Mm. So, Father God, help us, O oh God, hallelujah, not to not look to the left or to the right, O oh God, not to look to, O oh God, our sense, O oh God, of what is comfortable, that you are calling the prophets, O oh God, to begin a new journey, yes. hallelujah, that, that, that brings us into a new place, hallelujah, that the prophetic, O oh God, hallelujah, sets a pathway, hallelujah, that not only affirms the old, O oh God, but also brings in, O oh God, new dimensions, oh God. So, Father God, even in this season, oh God, you're calling for new voices, oh God, that we're preparing, oh God, the voices, oh God, none of the Moses, oh God, but the voices of the Joshua's, oh God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That we're calling forth, oh God, the voices, none of the Elijah's, but the Elisha's, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And Father God, we, we help us, oh God, to be a people, oh God, who will prepare, hallelujah, the, the Joshua's, oh God. Yes, who that we will prepare mm -hmm. the Elisha's, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. For, mm -hmm. for God, even in the generations that you're calling them to, oh God, you're calling Jesus. them into harder places, oh God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And they need deeper words, oh God. Father God, let, mm -hmm. let us not abandon them, oh God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let us engage them, oh God. Yes. Not to coddle, oh God, but to call them oh. forth, oh God, in greater dimensions. Oh yes, God, Lord. hallelujah, to Amen. count the cost, Amen. oh God, Amen. to know, oh God, hallelujah, that for some the blood is in their hands, oh God, because they did not cry out, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So, yes. Father God, help us, oh God, to establish, oh God, even a prophetic community, mm -hmm. an intercessory community, oh, yes, oh God, Jesus. that would engage, oh God, at a high level, oh God, how that will be discipled, oh God, hallelujah, that will be trained, oh God, mm -hmm. yes, hallelujah, yes, that yes. would not take offense, oh God. Oh. But we'll learn, oh God, to actually say the dust saith the Lord. Not the dust says the feelings, oh God, mm. but the dust saith the Lord. So yes. we thank you, God, for what you are doing and what you are calling, hallelujah, us to, oh God, as an ecclesia, as a mm. church, oh God. Hallelujah. That we are not to be, oh God, abandoning, oh God, yes. but we are to be engaging. Amen. We are to Amen. be accepting, oh God, of what God has said, oh God, even though we, we may not look like a Moses, oh God, mm. hallelujah, but we we are called to do a new thing, to take us into a new place, oh God, to have a new voice, oh God, to have a new wine skin, oh God, new wine for new, oh God, hallelujah, a, a, a new place, oh God. Father God, help us, oh God, to, hallelujah, set our minds as flint, oh God, hallelujah, and, and, and not move to the left or to the right, hallelujah, but be one that is obedient to the heavenly call, even as Paul was obedient. Help, oh God, this new generation of leaders, oh God, be obedient, yes. hallelujah, to see you. We thank you, God, for the yes, patterns yes. of the past. Yes. We thank you, God, for the, for the life, oh God, of yes. all those who have gone before us, oh God, and their faithfulness, oh God, hallelujah. We, we, we appreciate and, and recognize that, yes, Lord. but we now call, we, are, we now take on this mantle ourselves, yes. hallelujah, that we go forth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, I just thank you that you have said from the cross, mm. it is finished. My God. It is finished. Mm. The work that God is calling you to do, 
that work as well is finished, but it's in the future. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. yet to be fulfilled, yes. but it is finished. Right. That is done. Right. Now, move into it. Move into your future. Yes. Move into yes. your calling. Yes. Move into yes. your destiny. Yes. Be the person that you were designed to be right. and fulfill every act and deed that yes. God is yes. putting in your yes. spirit yes. Yes. to accomplish. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. This has just been a wonderful time Hallelujah. around this table Thank here so in prayer. Hallelujah. You, and we know that God is going to give you assignments. Absolutely. They're there. He's given them to you. You're going to get them in your spirit. Absolutely. You're going to awaken Absolutely. your soul and be a ground to yeah. hear the new thing that Hallelujah. he is making to become Hallelujah. reality. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, and we look forward to being with you on another wonderful Wednesday. Thank you for joining us, and take this to the streets. Amen. 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 Thanks for having me. Thank you for the invitation. Amen. Amen.